نباركك كجو ونتعامنك نسألك كجو ونستبقوك نجين لك كجو نتكلم إلى سمك كدروس نسجر لك عوز لك يسجر كل برك ولك يتكلم أي كل لسان أنت وقت وعملك أعمالك توجيع جاست أنا كوسا نجست عملك أنت لكلو تسجع ولكلو عز نفس ونسيه وعك بكم عرنا كدروس ولك زي ولا أنت مس سبت سلو كما زبلو يكدروس أنا عملك أملاك أشين إخيار هوي رفع لليتون بسلام سدرة تفرف معلتون بسلام بتيانات أبكا بزي جلات بزي ساس لا درس كنا مسجن هالن سالي تمرز بعمان أنك سعد هنو ينعم مبيت ولادي أملاك بردي إيت بنات النت النات تليين هو أشين يتوارك يتقدس أملاك أشين إخيار بقوة أشين تجين تلي جو تشينن أو كاتن سجان بركات الرديت عند تاسات الرباتشو، عملا كاتشن إخيار روي بس أجا بحاول تخيار عند تاسات دكاتشو، لازم لك نجار عند تادر ساتشو، كارلو ما كراه، كلو بابات عملا كنا تسوراتشو، عملا كاتشن إخيار روي بيت سو تاتشن هم بيت سو تاتشو مكو بيجار لوبات عند تاد بكر لاتشو، كابات تاتشن كتسادكو كابونة كلا هاي مانوت رديت بركات عملا جنة عند داير داير، عملا كاتشن إخيار ما هي براتشن ما هي برا يو توانن يو تاتشن يو تاتشن Bayar lebih cepat buat anda kita berkacau ke dua semun, anda yang antara dan our father abad acin boy. Our father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us and rescue us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Holy Virgin Mary, in the peace of the angel Gabriel, peace be unto thee. Thou art virgin in spirit as well as in body. O thou mother of perfect God, peace be unto thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Rejoice. Thou amongst women, blessed is the fruit of thy room. Rejoice. O thou who art full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Ask and pray for us to thy beloved Son, Jesus Christ, that he may have mercy on our souls and forgive us our sins. Amen. O Hogsie, Jesus Christos, Sarayatiat, Urim Sasi Abasa, Jesus Christos, Sarayatiat, Wadiat Akulos Buka, my Sarayatiat, Xavier Rifta. I cross my face and all over my body by the sign of the cross. In the name of the Father and of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. One God. I believe and offer my supplication unto. The Holy Trinity. I denounce Satan. In front of this, my Holy Mother, the Church. And for this. Mary resigns my witness. Forever and ever. Amen. We give thee thanks. O Lord, and we adore thee. We bless thee. O Lord, and we put our trust in thee. We give thanks unto thee. O Lord, and we serve thy holy Holy name. We worship thee. To whom all knees bow and worship. And all tongues serve. You are the God of gods. Lord of lords. And King of kings. You are the God of all who has flesh and soul. And we call upon thee. According to the teaching of your Holy Son. Who said. When you pray say. Our Father who art in heaven. All be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth. As it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive. Those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us and rescue us from all evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen O holy virgin mary in the peace of the angel gabriel peace be unto thee thou art virgin in spirit as well as in body O thy mother perfect god peace be unto thee blessed are thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb rejoice o thou who art full of grace the lord is with thee ask and pray for us to thy beloved son Jesus Christ, that he may have mercy on our souls and forgive us our sins. Amen. The prayer of faith. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all things. 
visible and invisible. We believe in the one Lord, Jesus Christ. The only begotten Son of the Father. We live with Him. Before the creation of the world. Light from light. True God from true God. Begotten, not made of. One essence with the Father. By whom all things were made. And without Him was not. Anything in heaven. Or earth made. Who for us men. And for our, for our salvation. Came down from heaven. Was made man. He was incarnate of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Virgin Mary. He came man. Was crucified for our sakes in the days of Pontius Pilate suffered died was buried and rose from the dead on the third day as was written in the holy scriptures ascended in glory into heaven sat at the right hand of his father and will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead there is no end of his reign we believe in the holy spirit the life giving God who proceeded from the father we worship and glorify him with the father and the son who spoke by the prophets and we believe in one holy universal Apostolic Church. And we believe in one baptism for the remission of sin and way for the resurrection of the dead and the life to come. World without end. Amen. Holy, 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 perfect Lord of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of the holiness of thy glory. We worship thee, Jesus Christ, thy merciful and heavenly Father, and the Holy Spirit, the life giver. For thou didst come and save us. I offer one worship to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I offer one worship. To the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I offer one worship. To the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Being one, He is three. And being three, He is one. We are three in person. And one in Godhead. <laughs> I worship before Our Lady Mary, Virgin. And Mother of God. Who is pure in her flesh. And in her soul. I worship before the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Which was sanctified by His precious blood. The cross is our might. The cross is our strength. The cross is our ransom. And the cross is the medicine of our soul. The Jews denied him. But we believe in him. We who have believed in him. Are saved by the power of his cross. Glory be to the Father. Glory be to the Son. Glory be to the Holy Spirit. It is due unto the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Glory be to the Father. Glory be to the Son. Glory be to the Holy Spirit. It is due unto the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Glory be to the Father. Glory be to the Son. Glory be to the Holy Spirit. It is due unto the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Glory be to our Lady Mary, Virgin and Mother of God. It is due unto our Lady Mary, Virgin and Mother of God. Glory be to the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is due unto the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let Christ remember us in his mercy. Amen. Do not neglect us in his second coming. Amen. Let him awaken us in order that we may thank his name. Amen. Let him make us firm in his worship. Amen. Our Lady Mary, lift up our prayers. Amen. Ask forgiveness for all our sins. Amen. Before the throne of our Lord, Amen. to him who has given us this bread, for his mercy endureth forever, to him who has given us this cup, for his mercy endureth forever, to him who has given us our food and clothing, for his mercy endureth forever, to him who endures all our sins, for his mercy endureth forever, to him who has given us his holy flesh and his precious blood, for his mercy endureth forever, to him who has saved us from death, for his mercy endureth forever, to him who has preserved us until this very moment, for his mercy endureth Forever. To, to him, him let, let us give glory, glory giving, giving thanks to God the Most High, and let us give thanks unto his mother and his honorable cross. Peace be unto thee. While bowing unto thee, our mother Mary, we beseech thee, we trust thee, to save us from wild and predatory animals. For the sake of Hannah thy mother, my father Yaakim, O Holy Virgin Mary, today bless our congregation. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord. And my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. For he hath regarded the low estate of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth, all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath done to me great things. And holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him. From generation to generation, he has showed strength with his arm. He hath put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of low degree in the imagination of their hearts he hath filled hun the hungry with good things and the rich he hath sent empty away he hath helped his servant israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spake to our fathers to abraham and to his seed forever glory be, be to, to the, the father, father the, the son, son and the holy spirit forever and ever amen a hymn of praise for the sixth day saturday Pure and shining, holy and praiseworthy art thou in everything. O thou who hast clasped the Lord in her hand, all creation rejoice with her and crieth out, saying, Rejoice, O full of grace. Rejoice thou, for thou hast found favor. Rejoice thou, for God is with thee. 
Pray them for us, O Holy One. Pray to him for us, O Holy One. We ascribe blessings to thy greatness, O awesome Virgin, and we send to thee joy with the angel Gabriel, for the fruit of thy womb hath become the salvation of our race, and hath brought us nigh unto God his Father. Rejoice thou. Pray to him for us, O Holy One. Pray to the Holy One. That Mary is undefiled, but the Holy Ghost took upon his abode in thee, and the power of the Most High overshadowed thee. O Mary, verily thou hast brought forth for us the Word, the Son of the Father, who dwelleth for existence forever. He came and saved us from sin. Pray to him for us, O Holy One. Pray to him for us, Holy One. Thou art the young shoot from the root of David. Thou hast brought forth for us in the flesh our Savior, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Word, who was of the Father, who was hidden before the world, and hiding himself took from thee the form or appearance of a slave. Pray to him for us, O Holy One. Pray to him for us, O Holy One. Thou art the second heaven over the earth, O spotless God bearer, for thee hath risen upon us the Son of Righteousness, and thou didst bring him forth according to the prophecy of the prophets, without seed and without defilement. Pray to him for us, O Holy One. Pray to him for us, O Holy One. Thou art the, that tabernacle which was called Holy of Holies, wherein the ark, Tabot, which was covered on all sides with plates of gold, and had therein the table, the table of the covenant, and the pot of gold of the hidden manna, that is to say, the Son of God. He came and dwelt with Mary, the virgin without blemish. He was incarnate of her, and she brought forth in the, wor in the world the King of glory. He came and delivered us. The garden shall rejoice for the Lamb, for the Lamb that is endowed with reason, the Son of the Father who dwelleth forever, hath come and delivered us from sin. Pray to him for us, O Holy One. Pray to him for us. Thou art called the mother of Christ, the king after thou didst bring him forth, that didst come into the spotless virginity through a marvelous mystery. Thou didst bring forth Emmanuel, and because of this thou didst preserve thyself undefiled. Pray to him for us, O we won. Thou art the ladder of which Jacob saw in the Son of God, for thou hast carried in thy seal womb him who has not been touched. Thou hast become an intercessor of our Lord Jesus Christ, who became incarnate of thee for our salvation. Pray to him for us, Holy One. Pray to him for us, O Behold, the Lord came forth from thee, O blessed lady, thou undefiled bright chamber, to save the whole world which he had created. In his abundant compassion and mercy, we glorify him and we praise him, for he is the beneficent one, the lover of man. Pray to him for us, O holy one. Pray to him for us, Holy One. Rejoice thou, O full of grace, virgin unblemished, vessel undefiled, glory of the world, light which shall never be extinguished, shrine that shall never be overthrown, staff of the faith, thou never failing support of the saints. Pray thou for us, thy beneficent Son, our Redeemer, that he may have mercy upon us and show us compassion and forgive us. Our sins in his mercy forever and ever. I mean, pray to him for us, O oh, Holy One. Pray. pray to him for us, O oh, Holy One. Sarota la Maria Musleta, Yadino Matorda, Sarota la Maria Musleta, Kazo Christiani Kabum Matorda, Sarota la Maria Musleta. La Hagarita Ethiopia, was on a Madra America, Kabum Matur Las, Rotala Maria Musalata, the Maiverina. 
የወት ይዋይ ይቀርቡም ማቶላ ጸሎታ ለማላይ ወስጠታ ለአክብርታ ወላይማታት ሁለን ይወልታ ንጸይት በለኛ ስርጉት መቅደስና ማምላክ በረዲየት በእናተነት አትንደየን በናችንን ጸሎታችንን ተቀብላ የልጆቻችንን የልቦናቸው ለመሻት ከአጥያት ወስተቀር የምታስቡት ሁሉ እንደተፈጸመላችሁ ቅዱስ ፍቃድ ይሁንልን አቤቱ አምላካችን እግዚአብሔር ሆይ ጉባያ ሐሪያትን ጉባኤ ጻድቃንን ጉባኤ ሰማይታትን ይባርክ የልጆቻችንንም ጉባኤቸው የተባረከ የተቀደሰ የሚያስተውል አይምሮ አምላካችን እግዚአብሔር ጥበብ ዕውቀት እንድትገልጽላችሁ እንድትከፍትላችሁ የራቀውን አቅረበ የጎላውን አረቀ አምላካችን እግዚአብሔር ሆይ በልቦናቸው ሲለዳላ እንድትጽፍላችሁ እንደምናሃልን አምላካችን እግዚአብሔር ሆይ ሰላም እንደዋልከን ሰላም እንድታስመሽ ያስጀመርካቸው የክርስቲና ህይወት ጉዞ እንዲጨርሱ እንድታደርግልን ያንተ ተጠበቃ ያንተ አባትነት እንዳይለያቸው ከዚህ ከመጣው መከፈትና ማሃት መከራ ሁሉ አምላክነት በሸርነት እንድትሰውራቸው ሰላም እንዳሳደርከን አምላካችን እግዚአብሔር ሆይ ሰላም እንድታስመሽ ከሰንበት ረዲየት ከቅዱሳን ጸሎት እንድታሳትፈን የጻድቁ ያባታችን ያቡነ ተክላ ሃይማኖት ረዲየት በረከት አማራጅነት እንዳይለየን ቅዱስ ስሙን እንዲያል እንጠራለን አወር ፋዘር አወር ፋዘር ሁ አርት ኢን ሄቨን hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us and rescue us from all evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen o holy virgin mary in the peace of the angel gabriel peace be unto thee thou our virgin in spirit as well as in body o thou mother of perfect god peace be unto thee blessed art thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb rejoice o thou who art full of grace the lord is with thee ask and pray for us to thy beloved son jesus christ that he may have mercy on our souls and forgive us our sins amen o jesus christos oraya ti atum sas yabasa christos ሰራያት ያቴ ወአት ያተኩሉ ዝበከ ማይሰራት ያት እግዚአብሔር ይፍታን ጉባኤያችሁ ተባረከ ተቀደሰ ይሁንልን አሜን ይስቱን አሜን you may all be seated now next our brother zamari adam will be singing a spiritual hymn for us hello everyone can you hear me and see me uh yes all right Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Demon pas kudus Adam la kami. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, all God. Amen. Let's all sing together. He truly loves me. 
He never left, my Lord, He truly loves me. When I give Him my sins, He gives me mercy. When I give Him my sins, He gives me mercy. When I give him my sins, he gives me mercy. When I give him my sins, he gives me mercy. God accepts our hymns and our prayers. Amen. Thank you, Zamari Adam. Um, so today's agenda will consist of a discussion led by Diakon Raphael and Diakon Malak, a sermon by Diakon Hanok, and a Q&A if we have time, with a closing hymn and a closing prayer. Um, Diakon Rufal and Diakon Malak will now be leading the discussion. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. How are you all today? I'm doing well, thanks to God. Um, so like uh, our brother Mikias just talked about, today's theme for um, the monthly meeting is temptation. And so I will be uh, leading, my, me and my brother, uh, Dag Malak, will be leading a discussion on temptation and uh, temptation we see in today's world. So my first question um, for all of you all to discuss is how do you define sin or temptation and then where does it come from? So um, hopefully you guys can unmute yourselves to talk or, um, add, or raise your hand as well um, and we hope that all of you guys try to say something. As Dr. Rufal said, we would prefer that you all raise your hands and then I'll be able, I'll unmute you, which will, will let you then talk. I just want to reiterate the question, if you guys didn't hear. How do you define sin or temptation and where does it come from? Okay. How do we raise our hand, Diakon uh, Nikarta? I'm sorry. I, oh, wow. I wasn't able to see where to find it. I think you can go to the chat section or and I think it's participants. So if you press the participants part, it'll allow you to raise your hand and then I'll be able to see you from there. Okay, so a few people have raised their hands. So I'm gonna first let Soliana talk. So let me unmute you. I think temptation means when something is telling you to do something when you know it's bad and you want to do it, but you know it's bad. Sometimes you do it, sometimes you don't do it. Okay, I think that's a good place to start off with this. Um, okay, thank you. You're welcome. Next, I'm going, I see Emmanuel here. Emmanuel, I'm going to unmute you. Okay, I think temptation means when, for an example, if we're doing tzom, and then someone temptation, like, 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 for an example, the devil, he tested God, and I think that's temptation. It's when temptation means that when you're doing tzom and someone tries to tempt you to break your tzom. Okay, okay that's good. Um, someone doesn't have their name here, but they're on an iPad. I'm going to unmute them, though. 
Um, I think temptation is like when something when it when this when the devil is like trying to lead you to do some to like do something bad and go against God. Yeah, that's true. That is true. Thank you. Next, we're going to hear from Elna and Donuts. Let me unmute you guys. We can come back to you guys. Uh, Tsega, let me unmute you. Um, I think um, temptation can be defined, well, sin can be defined as going um, outside of God's like rules or regulations and what he wants us to um, live by. And I think it can come from not only from the devil, but also from us um, steering away from like God's rules and um, the life under Christ, basically, like under the cross. That's very important, important what you just pointed out. Temptation is a big is basically where we fall away from God's protection and choose to do something that we know is wrong, but still do it anyway. Thank you. Okay, we have another hand here. Um, hello. Um, I think um temptation means when you know you're you're doing something wrong, but then at the same time you want to do it but you know it's going to have a negative effect. Mm -hmm, for sure. Thank you. If anyone else has any other thoughts to share, please raise your hands. You can go. You can go ahead, yeah, sir. Um, I think temptation means like when you want to do something, but it's gonna be hard to do that thing. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I think everyone pretty much summed up the answer. Um, I, I definitely think, you know, temptation and sinning is moving away from God's commandment for us and God's rules for us. Um, and it's satisfying our earthly pleasures um, rather than, you know, our sp spiritual needs. Um, so good job with that one. Um, the second question we have is what factors contribute to temptation and uh, what factors contribute to sin? And if you have something to share, please raise your hand. You can go ahead, Ro. Just like our sister, um, Saga said like a couple of seconds ago too, um, some factors that can contribute to temptation um, could be the devil are, are the like external factors, meaning like our environment and the people that we like hang out, like, or like are mostly around. And then it can come within, from within too. So that's just how I would like, I guess, look at it. Um, I just want to go off that. Um, I know our brother, um, Emmanuel talked a little bit about Zoom, but um, I know for me, you know, like going to school during um, Zoom, especially during Abby's Zoom, the early parts of it. Um, I remember like seeing all my friends eating like, um, like chicken and you know all those different type of things and I couldn't I wasn't able to eat that so um that was definitely temptation for me you know like seeing all my friends and seeing um all the people just eating and I, where I couldn't eat so I think that's a, a good example of temptation yeah I agree with what both of you guys said I think environment is definitely 
maybe if not the most one of the most like important factors that contribute to temptation because you know the natural things that are around us can easily tempt us into doing something that we possibly may not want to do okay thank you guys though for sharing uh simone let me unmute you um just like um our sister Rahul said it um i think um, everything we see um, outside of church and um, everything that we see in our every single day lives can c contribute to temptation. Um, even um, I feel like technology and social media also plays a big part. And so there's some things I think that can contribute to temptation. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. Thank you. Okay, next, uh, Leah, Mia, and Sosie, let me unmute you guys. Um, I think a factor that contributes to temptation is peer pressure because like if you have if you're surrounded by like people who are trying to make you like do something or make you feel a certain way then you might feel tempted to do something that you shouldn't do and also if a person is born into like unfortunate um circumstances then like like, for example, a person might be born into, like, a family who's, like, atheist. So then they're going to have to, like, face, like, more temptations um, that, that are going to make them, like, want to sin and stuff because they don't really, because they're not really close to God. I agree with that. I agree. Uh, our environment is something that contributes to a lot of things in our life, let alone us falling into temptation. So, and so, and peer pressure as well. So thank you for sharing that. You're welcome. Okay, Emmanuel. Yeah, I think a key thing is our, our consciousness. When we like develop through life, we constantly make decisions and those decisions affect how we look at certain things as good and bad. And like the more times we do something bad, it can be harder and like try and fight against the temptation. So our consciousness kind of develops like that. And like the more things we do good help develop it in a good way. But when we do bad things, it gets harder and harder to go back on the right path. So our consciousness, like our internal, like moral compass, I feel like is a big key factor in that. No, I agree. That's, that's very true. Very true. Thank you for sharing. Okay. Someone's here. Let me. And after you guys have raised your hand, please remember to lower it as well. Okay, Fitzum. Thank you, Jacqueline. Uh, maybe one thing I, I would I would think uh, that contributes to temptation would be uh, time. Uh, I think uh, when we have a lot of time, uh, quote unquote, free time on our hands. Uh, and, and instead of uh, going to uh, or, you know, leading our minds into something that would benefit our souls, we tend to uh, use that time to uh, give into temptations. Uh, so not occupying our mind and, and, uh, and, and ourselves uh, by uh, spiritual uh, work when we have time is also, I think, one contributor to, to temptation. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Okay, uh, Hermela and Reddit, let me unmute you guys. Uh, something that I think contribute, like a factor that contributes to temptation is when you start to lose your connection with God because when that happens, you can become more vulnerable to what the devil is telling you to do. That's very true. That's very true. Uh, the book of Psalms chapter 91 states how we are constantly under God's shadow and protection as long as we are with him. But the, the further that we get away from him, the, the, the more that we lose that protection and shadow from him. So that's a good point, though. Thank you. Okay, it's Edgar. Um, yeah, I agree with what everybody was saying, like, before me. Um, I think just the mere idea of, like... Um, just the idea of like wanting to take an easier way out could be a temptation because for example, like 
when you're like fasting, like the idea of wanting to eat something else that's not vegan is like getting the easier way out. So like taking that route is on its own, like a whole entire temptation. Um, it doesn't even have to be like through the devil. It's just wanting to get through something easier because being spiritual is not an easy path. So wanting to get through something easier on its own is its whole temptation. That is true. And I liked what you said about fasting, because I think a lot of us in today's society can struggle with that aspect of, uh, you know, maybe wanting to eat something that we shouldn't. So I agree with your point. So thank you for sharing. Uh, Soliana? I think one thing that contributes in temptation is distraction, especially during adults. Sometimes during Adase, we might want to we see a baby we might want to hold them, hug them, and that, that distracts us. We, want, we might want to talk to our friends. And I think that this, that distraction is one of the things. No, that, that is very true. Distractions are something that can easily take us off from the path that we're on right now. Thank you. Uh, Naomi? Um, I think that the outside world could contribute to temptation because when the world changes to more like like new uh, like technology, more based on technology, it could also change your personality and then it could move you more away from God. That's fair. External factors can definitely play a huge role in that. Thank you. So I think, I think, okay, yeah, you can go. okay, so um, I think everyone pretty much summed it up. Um, I think that uh, it's important to, uh, to know that, you know, we're not, being Christian in this world is a hard thing. Um, you know, uh, when Christ was in this world, uh, they crucified him. And so it shows that, you know, uh, God, this world isn't easy for us to live a Christ, truly Christian life. So uh, we have to acknowledge that and we have to um, try to surpass that so that we can reach the kingdom of heaven. Um, so the next question that we have is, and the last question as well, is how can we avoid falling into temptation and falling into sin? Okay, hey one, you can go ahead. Hi. So I think one thing that we should all like definitely do is self-reflect because I think it's really important to be able to reflect in times where you have fallen into temptation because if you can't reflect um, on the times that you have fallen into temptation, how can you prevent such in the future, right? So if we're able to constantly reflect on how, what we've done wrong and what we've done good, we can figure out, we can use that to like better ourselves in the future, especially in terms of temptation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, for sure. Thank you. Uh, yeah, wait, let me. When someone's eagering you to do that one thing that they want you to do, you should just keep on saying, no, I shouldn't do that or something bad might happen with me and God. For sure. Self-control is very key when it comes to dealing with temptations. Thank you for that. Uh, Nebu, you can go ahead. I think a key factor is um, like asking God to praying every day and asking God to prevent, to give you the power to prevent yourself from, you know, doing these kind of things. And like, also you should, even if you did it, you should always like go as soon as, as after you did it, go to like God and like pray and say, please God, forgive me for what I've done. Can you give me the power to prevent this from happening next time? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let's see what uh, Leah, Mia, and so see the name of you guys. Um, one thing you can do to avoid falling into temptation is by reading the Bible because not only do they say like a lot of um, important like rules for you to follow that will prevent you from falling into sin, but they also say like, um, yeah just stuff like that um yeah also um you could you should also pray to god and like when you pray to god you should like admit the um the sins that you've been doing so then um you can have like more discipline and you can tell yourself like next time i'm not going to do it and mostly sins lead to doing bad things 
So another thing you can do is to like realize the effects of the thing you're going to be doing and how um, it could cause negative things to happen and no one wants negative things to happen. So mm -hmm, for sure. Asking for God's forgiveness is very crucial when it comes to temptation. Thank you for that. Okay, let me and Elna and Donna to you guys can go ahead next. I think we need to like avoid the environment that contrib contributes to our temptation. And then once we do that, maybe we could like at least try get closer to God and away from temptation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Making sure that we surround ourselves in an environment where we aren't too easily tempted to fall into doing something that we don't want to do is very important. So thank you for that thought. Uh, Naomi, you can go ahead. Um, we could avoid falling into temptation by trying by keep on praying and before we fall into the double the, the the devil's hand think about would that really help us during your life when that would would that really keep you safe mm -hmm, mm -hmm. thank you for that okay uh Zaga, you can go ahead um i think since we fall into temptation a lot like it's just a normal tribulation that christians experience um in the moment i think crossing yourself like literally putting your hand into a cross and crossing yourself and saying i think it will help a lot because it will you know make you stronger and make you remember god in the exact moment um it's worked on me multiple times so i advise you guys to do it um yeah that's me. That's very true. And that's actually something that I find myself doing as well. And that kind of correlates with someone, with what someone in the comments said by praying, you know, praying might be one of the easiest solutions that we can do to help ourselves from falling into temptation. Uh, also, another comment that was said in the chat was one way to avoid falling into temptations is to look at your decisions and think and think, what would Jesus do? So I, th I think that's something useful to, you know, self-evaluation when it comes to temptations, you know, making sure if, if we follow our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and think if it's something that he wouldn't do, is it something that we should do as well? So I think that's a very useful comment. So thank you. If anyone else has any other thoughts, please raise your hand. Thank you, Diakon Rufal, and thank you, Diakon Malak, for leading that discussion on temptation. And thank you to everyone who participated. Next, our brother, Diakon Hanok, will be delivering a sermon. Can you all hear me right now? Yes, yes. we can hear you. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Zoom is interesting. Other apps make me use my headphones, but Zoom, I don't need my headphones. All I need is my mic. But Glory be to the name of our Lord who has gathered us here together in his name, in his presence, in his glory. Thank you all, UOTY Boston, Kasis, everyone, for inviting me to this Gubae or, or to this gathering and and thank you especially for leading into my talk or my sermon today with your discussion because it's very important. We know this from uh, Midrawi or an earthly perspective that mothers and fathers are able to feed their children while they're babies because at that point, you know, that's, that's all that could be done. The person is not able to take care of themselves yet at that stage of their life. But if we continue to be at that stage, we're called in medical terms in a vegetative state. So we don't want to be in a spiritual vegetative state. So it's very important that you continue discussions like these so that you could build one another up, so that you can edify one another through discussing on these spiritual matters. So amongst, uh, let me zoom out a little bit. Amongst our traditional school, what's called Abinet or Kolotumirtbet, 
there are many kufloch, there are many categories, and one of those categories is Mas'ayft Bet or Tirguamin Na Mas'ayft Bet, which is the Ethiopian school of biblical exegesis or the Ethiopian school of interpretation and writings or interpretation and scriptures. From that division, there is a kufl where the people who are the heads of that are called Ligahruyan or chief amongst the elect. And those are those who study Mas'afa Manokosat. So that is the book or the books of the monks. Divide that even further, just to show you how vast the teachings of our church are. And you have that first section of Mas'afa Manokosat or the book of monks for Marisat or Isaac the Syrian. And there's a, a teaching within that book that many great teachers of our church have reminded people during this pandemic. And that teaching is called Asna Oba'at. So, uh, excuse me, Kasis, if I mess up any of the Sayyaf or the Wadaki or the Tatai. Um, but that idea is about Magbiahin Masnat, or enduring, spending a lot of time in that place where you live, where you reside, where you spend time the most, in your vicinity, in your locality. Nowadays, there are modern authors like the Orthodox Christian one, Nassim Nicholas Taleb, who I like to talk about often for many different subjects, uh, Kevin Carson, many different people, Joe Norman, who have papers and books writing about localism. But far before they ever did, centuries ago in the Near East, Marisak or Isaac the Syrian wrote about this idea of, of localism. And, and one of the beautiful things is today we take, we're taking this idea of temptation and we're trying to find the string of thought of temptation and attack it from every angle. I heard of you uh, attacking it from the angle of what's the role of the devil and Satan. I'll be, I'll be talking about that actually, beginning with that. So you'll see, so it's, it's very timely. We didn't plan this all out and I'm, I'm glad that I put the extra pressure on you all to, to maintain the control of the discussion so that I'm not influencing it. And we could see that without me influencing it, we're gonna have the same strains of thought. When you are led by the same spirit, you will be on the same page. And you will see that in different times, in different places, in different languages. And I'll try to display that myself. So asnobat, or enduring your entrance, or localism, is about staying on one topic or one idea. And it's typically done in our, in our church by going through an entire book at one time. Now today, rather than going through one book, what we're doing is taking this one idea, or excuse me, or topic or theme, and that is temptation, and we're tracing it. So that's often called systematic theology, seeing how one idea of temptation displays itself in various areas. Um, if you want to see more at length, book length study, I would suggest you go to ephesusschool.org, which is called the Ephesus School Network. It's a network of Orthodox Christian clergy like myself. The rest of them are actually all priests. I'm the only deacon on there. And um, they have in written form, in blog, in audio form, and also in YouTube or video form, different takes on whole books of the Bible. And, and they are releasing material Monday through Thursday. So four days a week, eventually the idea is to get it five days. Sometimes I'm releasing interviews on there too. So sometimes you could, you could get up to five days a week. And in any event, that will take you on a more book by book study. That's where I have my Tawahado Bible study. But here today, yeah, I could type it in the chat. Ephesus. Excuse me. Um, so any of those two resources will work in Spotify, Apple, or Google, or just the main website, ephesusschool.org, and you see many resources for book length studies. But right now we're focusing on the one topic of temptation. And so you led into it thinking about Jesus in the desert. I heard one of you say that, which I, I appreciate. That's an interesting one because the word temptation is not used. So it's it's the, the concept or the narrative, the story of temptation without the actual word. Today, I'm going to go through the actual places in the Bible where we see the word explicitly in the New Testament. But before we get into the New Testament, I want to get to the Older Testament. Uh, thank you, Hewan, for Salatabab um, Barshing. And then 
I want to start off in the Old Testament where we don't see the word, but where we see the idea or the concept beginning. And so to start off in the Older Testament, like I said, the word is not explicitly there in the analysis that I'm presenting today. So it's more the idea. But if we were to talk about the word in the Older Testament, Hebrew is the majority language and the minority language is Aramaic. So those are the languages that have to be examined when doing any serious study of any concepts like this. Since most of my references will be from the New Testament, where it is explicitly mentioned, I had to look up the Greek. I don't, again, I don't know Greek, but I do every effort that I can to examine it in what are called interlinear texts. You can go to BibleGateway.com, for example, and type the Mount's interlinear text. That's one I use, but I don't make many, any money off of them. So you could use any interlinear text that you want so you could see it transliterated. That means like when you see our names, which come from Giz, and you see them written in English, that's how many issues there are with sometimes we have the same name. People named Henok, for example, have like three, four different ways of saying the name Henok. So just think about that and you'll be able to search it in different dictionaries like Strong's Dictionary or whichever dictionary you can to find the meaning. So in the New Testament, the important language is Greek. And in the Greek, the word temptation is perasmos or pirasmos. That's P-E-I-R-A-M-O-S or P-I-R-A-M-O-S, A-S-M-O-S. So people may spell it or transliterate it differently. But ja, go and find that word and you can see how different people are arguing and studying that. The Roman bishop or the pope, as they call him, had a decision about a couple of years ago to change the translation of the Lord's Prayer in English because of a discussion that they were having around this word temptation. I personally don't go necessarily with that. Um, there is an Orthodox Christian scholar named David Bentley Hart, who I will again mention later. He has a whole copy of the New Testament that I have the, the audio version of that's very literal. And he also has his own ideas about this word. Father Paul Nadim Tarazi, who's heavily involved, another Orthodox Christian scholar, heavily involved with the Ephesus School Network, has another perspective on this word. Uh, again, one of those uh, podcasts, Teach Me Thy Statutes, has a Father Aaron Warwick, who also has tackled this issue. So many people have so many different ideas about temptation. So I'm glad that you had this holistic view or attempt to discuss it. it. It's not easy. So when I looked it up in the dictionary, erasmus or pirasmus, temptation has all of these meanings. Temptation can mean by itself, temptation. It could mean a trial, like I had a trial or I went to court and had a trial. It could mean a test. Like, why are you testing me or your teacher giving you a test? In that same vein, it could be an exam or an examination. It could be a probation or a probationary period. Like if any of you have ever been in trouble at school and then maybe you're in a probationary period or you know people who are incarcerated or in jail and when they come out, they're in a probationary period, which is a temporary period where they're free, but they're kind of not free because they're being watched in a certain way. It could mean experiment and later on and this is funnier because it shows how the point of view or the perspective can change everything it can mean a calamity or an affliction which is something that is terrifying something that is fearful something that is awe-inspiring so temptation can be all of these things temptation trial examination probation experiment calamity affliction the same one word Pirasmos can mean all of these different things. So now we're going to examine it. Today I'll be reading from the New King James Version. There's no perfect translation in English. I want to make that clear. We do not have yet an EOTC that has been fully translated uh, a Bible. So we, we just simply don't have it. So I, I uh, find myself going through the Revised Standard Version, which is the RSV, the NRSV, the New King James Version, sometimes the King James Version, it really depends how I feel. I have a few other Bibles as well that I won't get into now because it may confuse you, but I focus on those which are very literal and then those which are 
more thought for thought to, si to try to see, you know, what are the differences of opinions? What is the debate going on? In any event, I'm just going to read for you verse 1 of chapter 3 in Genesis, or Ori Zafutaret. And that is the first book of the Bible, and so it is the first place where we see this temptation. In fact, it has a header in the New King James uh, Version, which says, The Temptation and the Fall of Man. But in the original Bible, there are no headers. And in the text itself, we don't see the word temptation, but we see the idea or the narrative of the story, temptation. It's a story I'm sure a lot of you know well, so I'm just going to read the one line. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, has God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? So now, you know, the serpent knows very well what God has said, and he is giving an invitation to our father Adam and to our mother Eve, to the groundling and to the mother of the living, to sin, to be disobedient. He's giving them a counter offer of disobedience to the offer of God for obedience. The entire biblical story can be summed in Genesis 1 to 11. And if you really want to push the point hyperbolically in Genesis 1 to 4. So I'm going to have a forthcoming book on that subject. In this temptation in chapter 3, in this trial, in this exam, in this calamity or affliction, we see an experiment gone wrong. We see our father Adam and we see our mother Eve failing the test. The story of humanity and the story of the sacred scriptures in which we have the revealed truth of God, of the living God, not like the dead statues or the other idols, is the story of human failure and in the mercy of God who gives us second chances. Our living God, the author of life, is the God of second chances. The entire biblical story follows this randomly selected people, Israel, which is the other name for Jacob, who's the son of Isaac, who's the son of Abraham, right? A randomly selected sample population who repeatedly and hyperbolically almost unreasonably, fails and fails and fails, is constantly disobedient to God. Almost every other set of literature, you see either some failure and some success, like in the hero's journey that you'll see in most movies play out, like in The Lion King or in Star Wars, all these classic heroic films. And yet, in the Holy Scriptures, they're always, always, always failing. Other people will tell you how great their forefathers were. And here we have the authors of scripture led by the Holy Spirit telling us how they failed and were disobedient until the one obedient, one of a kind son of God, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, comes on the scene in the New Testament and gives people the ultimate New Testament, new chance second chance or second opportunity to change their ways and to live their lives responsibly by being obedient to God. So, perasmos or temptation, the trial, the test is God's opportunity or chance for us to correct the disobedience of our forefathers and our foremothers with our own individual and communal obedience, communal as a church community and individual as us. We have responsibility to be obedient to God by ourselves, and we have the responsibility to help all of the people in our church community also be obedient until our last breath, or until we pass away and fall asleep in the Lord, or until he comes back again, as we say in our Zalota Haimanot, and as our brother and sister beautifully prayed for us earlier, until he comes back, to judge the living and the dead, which the church calls in its dogmatics, Tinsai Zagubai, or the gathering or the resurrection of all. So the next text we're going to look at is also in the Older Testament, 
is in Job chapter one. Job is a phenomenal book, it has 42 chapters. Whenever I have hazen or sorrow, I find myself going back to the book of Job, and I encourage you to do that. Either the book of Job or anything in the wisdom literature, like Mas'af al Makbub, right? Like Ecclesiastes are great for times of hazen or sorrow. Of course, the Psalms of David or Mazmura Dawid as well, all the wisdom literature. So, Job chapter one. I'm going to read verses six to 12 here, and then later 21. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and the Satan also came among them. And the Lord said to the Satan, from where do you come? So the Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro on the earth and from walking back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to the Satan, have you considered my servant or my slave, Job, Eyob, that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil. So the Satan answered the Lord and said, does Job or does Eyob fear God for nothing? Have you not made a hedge around him, around his household, and around all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands, and his possessions have increased in the land. But now stretch out your hand and touch all that he has, and he will surely curse you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your power. Only do not lay a hand on his person. It means don't hurt him. Don't take his life. So the Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. It's an amazing scene, and it plays out for 42 chapters. And he begins by taking away his wife, his children, and all of his possessions. And there's this fantastic line. It's very close to my heart. My tete, my grandmother, um, my last grandparent, she passed away about eight months ago. And in, it was eerie. In the past year of her life, she, she was always uh, quoting good psalms to me. Um, she has a five to seven hundred year old Mazmura Dawit that she would often pray for. You know, it's the prayers of our grandmothers that, that keep us here and keep us enduring in our faith till this very day. But anyway, in the last year of her life, every time I would talk to her, which was not as often as I should have, but every time I talked to her, she would quote this to me in Giz from Mas'af Iyob. So in addition to her, her Masmura Dawid, she knew her Iyob, at least partially, in Giz as well. And it was eerie because it was towards the end of her life. And, and I felt, you know, I felt that that was happening. I, of course, you know, I didn't have any premonitions. I didn't know when exactly it was going to happen, but... She kept saying to me, The full line, um, let me take out the, the full line, because there's a preceding line that she didn't mention, but it's from verse 21 here. Um, verse 20, actually. No, no, 21. Naked, this is the part that she didn't say. Naked, I came from my mother's womb, and naked I shall return there. And in the King James famous language, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. I'm sure you may have heard that before. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. His wife, taken away. His children, taken away. Uh, his possessions, his goats, his donkeys, whatever he had, taken away. And what does he say? Buruka yikun sumula exahir. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He giveth and he taketh. He gives and he takes away. It's an acknowledgement that God is always in control. I heard, I, I heard you all mentioning Satan or the devil, so it's, it's interesting, like I said, that I had already prepared that without speaking to you all about that. And, and we have to remember the functionality of Satan or the devil because it's not some old Canaanite religion where God has an equal. God has no equal. When the Gospel of Luke comes out and in the Psalms, we say, Who is like you? 
who resembles you amongst the gods? Nobody. People have these little deities, these demigods, these gods and goddesses that they, that they claim to have, but nobody is like our God. Our God is always on his throne. He's always seated. He's always a shepherd. He's always our pastor. He's always feeding his flock and taking care of us. And he's always in control. So whenever temptation or a test or an exam, an experiment, a calamity or an affliction in our point of view comes across us, we need not fear. Satan mafrat agarbanim. We are never to be afraid of Satan. We are to shun him. We are to renounce him. We say, as you said earlier in our prayers, or Satan, or diablos. We say we deny you, we renounce you, we shun you. That's what we say in our baptismal rite as well. But we are not to fear him. Not now, not ever. So in Genesis, we see humanity failing in obedience, failing the test, failing the temptation. In Eeyore, we see someone who's not even a Jew, someone in a far off land, even in the Old Testament, showing us that the Gentiles, all of humanity, were always a part of God's plan, being obedient. We have all these Israelites being disobedient, who are the people of God, the chosen ones. We're the insiders. Remember, we're Israel's enoughs. We are Israel of the soul, of the breath of life, the new Israel, the inherited Israel. So we as insiders have to watch out that outsiders are not being more obedient to God than us. And so here we have Eob. He's not amongst the children of Israel, according to the flesh, but he is according to the spirit. Remember, God said he can make children of Abraham, which means children of the covenant, out of rocks. Even Peter is called the rock. So think about that. Think about the role of the word dingai or dingairas as an insult in our culture. And think about, even if we were to call someone that, God, with the snap of his finger, because he's greater than Thanos, can change that person to be one of his children. He has even spoken through donkeys and made them the crown of his glory as he entered into Hosina or Palm Sunday. So think about he could use anyone or any animal at any time because he's always in control. So in Genesis, we have a failure of the temptation or a failure of the test. And in Job, we have a passing of the test. Now we'll move on to the newer Testament and see a series of scriptures briefly going through each of them so that we can examine and see the role of temptation. I'll take you in canonical order. So we'll start off with Evangelia Matthews or the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 6, verse 13. And do not lead us into temptation. This is Salota Exi or the Lord's Prayer, which we also prayed in our daily prayers. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. So in the Lord's Prayer, what we have is we're pleading with the Lord. We're begging the Lord to delay the test. We are living our lives every day on the daily bread. The physical or the daily bread according to the flesh is the food that sustains us from day to day. The spiritual daily bread is the instruction of the Lord, the word of life, the kalahiwat, that teaches us how to live. And when we're not quarantined like the way we are now, and especially if we visit the monasteries in Ethiopia, all the great ones, Zawai, we can go and have the ultimate daily bread, which is his own flesh and his own blood on a daily basis by receiving kurban, by receiving the communion, or by receiving the Eucharist. So while we're doing that now, there's a present day of judgment that we talked about. 
Judgment Day is the final test. It's the final temptation, right? So this is why people argue about the words. This word temptation refers to a test. And the final test is It's that guest or that unknown date in which the Lord will return, his second advent, his second coming. The Tensai is a wubai, right? One of the five pillars of our mystery, the resurrection of the dead and the judgment thereof. So on that day, there is a big test. So when we pray the Lord's Prayer, we're saying, we don't know when the test is, but please, please make it next week. Not today. Give us forbearance. People with student loans, I don't know if any of you are old enough to have student loans like me. People with student loans ask for forbearance. And some of them, Sharash, are asking. Give us one second, everyone. We're having a bit of technical difficulties with Dakon Hinox's connection. Can you hear me? Yeah, we are. Yes, we can hear you. Can you all hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Dublin. Yes. yes. Thank you. Thank you for being patient with me. The power just went out again in my neighborhood. You're good. You're good. We can hear you and see you. Okay. Well, wow. <laughs> we have to roll with the punches. This itself is a form of temptation. This is a teaching within a teaching or a parable within a parable. Sometimes we have to learn from this. I've just begun talking about the temptations in the Newer Testament, and we get a, an, a temptation that maybe we're more familiar with back home. Uh, is a great preacher and teacher in our church. And he said something very interesting recently when people were asking him about the coronavirus to talk, both in secular avenues and in our church's official YouTube at EOTC TV from the Synod, from the Holy Synod. He said, what was interesting is that whether it's the most country bumpkin in Ethiopia or whether it's the height of people's power in America, everyone has shown themselves to be made equal. We all knew that, you know, death is due to all mortals. As we say when we remember the arrest of Our Lady, the Holy Virgin Mary, we know that death is due to all people who die or death is due to all mortals. And so we knew everyone was going to eventually be six feet under. But even before that happened, here we are, and we get a reminder from God about how frail we are. Sometimes we might get cocky or arrogant or haughty in the United States, and we might think that we are above and beyond the ability to feel pain, to feel suffering, to feel third world problems. And yet, here we are, and we are receiving the same level of treatment 
from the Lord, the Lord who chooses to shine the sun on all people, the Lord who chooses to also have rain fall down upon all people, is showing us the equality that we all have. So in any event, in the Lord's Prayer, what we are asking for when we say, lead us not into temptation, is do not bring us to the trial. That's how other people are translating it nowadays with their newer scholarship. Do not bring us to the final judgment. Delay, forbear. Please, save it for later. We're not ready. I know you gave us a second chance, but please, give us another chance. Allow us to keep going. Allow us another breath of life to resist the devil, to renounce the devil, to shame him by being obedient to you. The next verse I want to look at is in Mark. We have the gospel according to Marcos or Mark, chapter 14, verse 38. Here, the Lord is giving advice to his followers. He says, watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. This is another one of those iconic phrases in the English language. The English language, the majority of the idioms of the sayings of the Zeyve are from the King James Version. It's a little difficult for contemporary readers to follow along, but that's why I go with the New King James Version a lot of the times. Again, I, I consult other ones because it's not a perfect translation. It has a lot missing and some errors. But overall, it has this reserved beauty of speech and these ababaluch, or these proverbs, these sayings that we all know. Watch and pray lest you enter into perasmus, into temptation, into the trial, into the test, into the calamity or affliction. Watch out for judgment day. Your spirit, your thoughts, your will may be there, but your flesh is weak. That means we cannot be lazy. That means we cannot be slothful. We cannot be slow. We can't take days off. The apostle in Hebrews says, as the day approaches, meaning not manana, but meaning judgment day, we don't need to reduce the amount of times that we gather. We need to increase them. Okay, coronavirus is here. Does that mean we need to do less church? We have an excuse to not go to church, to not learn anymore, to not learn how to be obedient to God by loving the visible neighbors in front of us, to reflect glory upon on our invisible yet living God? No, it means we need to gather more. So, may the Lord bless you all for gathering more. In addition to Sunday, here you are on Saturday. I believe during this Omi, it was every day. This kind of regularity is amazing and prepares us, again, to reflect the lives of the monastics, which are reflecting the lives of the angels in Isaiah and in Revelation, who always say to him, Kadus, 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 holy, holy, holy. The next line I want us to look at is in the Pauline epistles is in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Here, there are huge sections, especially, you could say 9 to 11, but really 10 and 11, where the Apostle Paul is warning the Corinthian church to be careful in how they are administering and receiving the communion. And he says amidst this, no temptation, perasmos, no temptation, no test, no trial, no experiment, no calamity, no affliction has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful. Who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able? But with the temptation, notice, but with the temptation, will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. 
So the Lord, if we trust in his voice, if we trust that he is the Nolawi Taguza Iyitnawum, that he is the shepherd that has no sleep, that is always in control, and if we listen to the voice, he will be like someone who's got a master security camera and we are going into an escape room, which is all the craze nowadays. I don't know if any of you have done those escape rooms in Boston, but he's as if he's got a master camera and he watches and he knows the maze and he made the maze and he knows the way out. So he will guide us out, but not if we sit on our laurels, not if we're lazy or slothful, but if we continually seek him, and continually say, Yikun Fakadika, may your will be done, or as it is iconically known in English, thy will be done. So for constantly seeking him and begging him, give us the grace of the Holy Ghost so that we may be able to escape this temptation. And if we have faith, here it says. God is faithful. He's loyal. Do not trust in the loyalty of your rulers. Do not trust in the loyalty of your friends. We are all human beings. We are all sons of Adam, sons of the groundling, and the sons of the dust. O Adam, marit anta wutagabu wusta marit. O Adam, you are the ground. You are the dust. And unto the dust you shall return. Unto the ground you shall return. We are temporary, and yet God is forever. God is eternal. God is faithful. And so if we place our trust in him and ask him to get us out of temptation, he will do it. Verse 6, or excuse me, I said verse 6. Um, the next point I have is First Timothy chapter 6, verse 9. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and harmful lusts which drown men in destruction and in perdition. But afat yasam tachwal. This is amazing. So the temptation or the test to be rich, the lifestyle that maybe some of you are too young to remember being flaunted in exhibits old show, right? Of displaying phenomenal cribs or phenomenal houses, but maybe you'll still see in the culture of hip hop writ large or, or really the culture writ large, people who wanna have a ton of cars, a ton of giant homes. In the Bible, it uses agrarian or farm analogy. So it says people who want giant guatara or giant grain fields right but who tell who tell their their nafs be touchy eat drink enjoy yourself but forget the starving person next to them forget the naked homeless next to them those people are falling into temptation that means they're failing the test they're being disobedient to the royal law to the law of love so they're being snared they're being trapped it's like a mouse trap or a bear trap Riches, wealth are traps for us. That's why Marisak or Isaac the Syrian, St. Basil the Great, John Chrysostom, they were furious, furious in warning you about the traps of not attending to the poor, not attending to the needy. In fact, James, who I'm going to get to next in chapter 1, I think towards the end of verse 21, says that the right religion is the one who takes care of the Eberrat and the Gualamauta, of the orphan and of the widow. That is orthodoxy. That is the right religion. But in verse 12 of the same chapter, he says, Bus'u, blessed is the man who endures temptation. Blessed is the man who endures an experiment. Blessed is the man who endures affliction. Blessed is the man who passes his exam. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised 
to those who love him. Remember Solomon, for however wise he was, fell into the temptation of having 800 wives and eventually fled after their gods and did idolatrous things. Johnny Depp, who a lot of you may have seen in the Pirates of the Caribbean and a lot of other movies, is one of those people who got a ton of money and he lost a lot of money because he tried to have 20 houses. So even before the final judgment, when God is judging him, he is getting judged on earth by his own financial recklessness. In our own church, in Mistera Taklil, in the mystery of holy matrimony, we see the bride and the groom, which are the ultimate example of our Lord Jesus and the church, wearing a phenomenal cape and a glorious crown, a nice kazala zaud or akli. And that crown of theirs is to remind us of the crowns of the martyrs. Like just yesterday, our church celebrated the crown of the martyr Georgis or St. George. And his crown, like all the crowns of the martyrs, are there because they followed the path of the Lord and they passed the test. We know that they got an A on their exam because their last breath was spewed in honor of the Lord. We see gruesome photos and icons sometimes with their heads cut off, like with Georgis and with John the Baptist, Johannes Matmak or Matmak Malakwat. And yet, we are joyful. We sing songs. We chant. Why? Because we have faith. We have the utmost trust that they are blessed because those men endured the exam. They passed the test. They have been approved and received the crown of life that James or the Apostle Jacob here is telling us about. It's amazing. And even if we are not able to get all the way to that stage, martyrdom has steps. In the Giz and in the Greek, martyr and sama'it or sama'e, mean confession or testimony in addition to the martyrdom we know of, of dying for our Lord. So it's the same word. It's not a different word. To give witness, to give testimony, is to die. It's the same word. There's no difference in the word. In English, we use a different word. We say testimony, and then we say martyrdom. In Giz, it's not like that. In Greek, it's not like that. Martyr, martyr. Sama'e, 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 sama'e. It's one word. You give testimony. You give witness. You give your life. There's a story of a, a, a half Sudanese, half Ethiopian Orthodox Christian who was told to deny Christ. She did not deny Christ. She took her mother's faith. She did not deny Christ. She was ready for death. And in the last minute, through international efforts, she was saved. Those people are called confessors. Because they were ready for death, but death did not see them. They were taken out. Just like Salah Studakik or the three youths. They were ready for death, and yet they were not put to death in that moment. Just like Hasanu wa Ammu. Just like Kirkos and Iluta. They were ready for death, and yet they're saved. They were tempted. They were given a test, an experiment, a calamity, an affliction. And yet, they were approved. They were given that crown of life, that crown of martyrdom. And so, even if we don't get to that stage, there are moments when we are persecuted. Like the early Christians in Nero, like the Christians of China today, or even in our peer groups at school or in our workplaces, we may be mocked by our friends for fasting. We may be mocked for giving away our money, for giving alms for wanting to pray communally, for wanting to pray as individuals. We may be mocked for prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, for taking care of the orphan, the widow, for spending all this time in our church communities. And yet, on the last days, it is the mockers who will be mocked. It is the scoffers who will be scoffed at. Because it says in Psalm 2, He who is enthroned, in heaven, laughs. 
he scoffs at them because we are following the way of the cross, the way of sacrificial love, the way of passing through the temptation. The last scripture I'll read to you is from 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. Then the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust under punishment for the day of judgment. For those of you who are curious with Mas'af Ahenok, maybe for another day too, there's still a lot I don't know about it. One of the things that I do know about it is that the letters of Peter, the letter of Jude, and some other select parts of the Bible are very, very, very obvious allusions to Mas'af Ahenok or the book of Enoch. It's a story for another day. For right now, the Lord, as I've been telling you, delivers the godly, those who try to seek after him, those who try to be holy like he is holy, who try to be perfect like he is perfect, those who believe and trust in him, put their utmost trust, their superlative trust in him, that he will give them an escape. And he reserves the unjust under punishment. Whether it's some of the old fathers of the church, sometimes, Marisag, Gregory, the theologian, Origen, whether it's newer people like David Bentley Hart or the folks at Public Orthodoxy at Fordham, you may come across people who are very intellectual and who are correct on a lot of matters in our church. And yet here, they want to take away God's role as judge. He has many roles, but his ultimate role is judge. They want to tell you apocastasis. They want to say everyone is going to be saved. It's possible that everyone is going to be saved, but that decision is God's decision and it's not ours. And the church has been consistent on this throughout time and place for thousands of years now. On the other end of the uh, perspective, you have the Protestants who will try to tell you they're saved now, they'll ask you if you're saved right now. And, you know, they say with such utter confidence, confidence that the Apostle Paul didn't have elsewhere, how he talks about he needs to watch out that he is standing to make sure that he does not fall. So confidence that the Apostle Paul, of all people who should have confidence, does not have. They try to assert now. The proper position is to know what Scripture says, that the Lord will save whom he pleases. If he wants to save no one and damn everyone, that's his right. If he wants to save all people, that's his right. If he wants to save some people and not others, that's his right. The important thing for us is to remember that he taught us from from Genesis to John's revelation and throughout the history of the church. He has taught us that Pirasmos or pirasmos, temptation, trials, tests, exams, examinations, probations, experiments, calamities, afflictions are all second chances. They're all opportunities for us. So, the loving kindness of His is eternal, is everlasting. His mercy endures forever. As we say that, we need to live our lives seeking Him and seeking to love every single person we encounter, no matter what happens, and always calling upon his name to save us. Glory be to God for all things. Thank you for having me. May we hear the word of life. Thank you everyone for participating. Due to the time, we will not be doing a Q&A. But we will be moving on to Mesmur because time kind of ran out. Um, our sister, Bethlehem, will be delivering a closing Mesmur for us. So, Bethlehem, if you can unmute yourself. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Okay. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. The stars that shine in the darkness. 
fountains of hope in the desert. I had listened to the march of the martyrs and heroes and fighters of the faith, defenders of the faith, the stars that shine in the darkness. Fountains of hope in the desert ahead. Listen to the march of the martyrs, the heroes and fighters of the faith, defenders of the faith, the first martyrs, even while they were stoning you. Showed your mercy for that you saw in the heavens, the holy trinity. How you lived and died is Christ's reflection, and your faith inspires our generation. Oh, Saint Stephen, the first martyr, defender of the faith. The stars that shine in the darkness, fountains of hope in the desert. I had listened to the march of the martyrs, the heroes and fighters of the faith, defenders of the faith, the Armenian virgins, Sema. When the king lusted after your beauty, he did, and no, you kept yourself in purity. You loved Christ till death with true affection, and your faith inspires our generation. Oh, Saint Tarsima, the Armenian virgin, defender of the faith, the stars that shine in the darkness, fountains of hope in the desert. I have listened to the march of the martyrs, the heroes and fighters of the faith, defenders of the faith, Saint George, the Roman soldier. With your faith in Christ, you slay the beast in the heaven to sin. Today with the high priest, you overcame trials and tribulations, and your faith inspires our generation. Oh, St. George, the Roman soldier, defender of the faith, the stars that shine in the darkness, Fountains of hope in the desert. I had listened to the march of the martyrs, the heroes and fighters of the faith, defenders of the faith, the thirty martyrs of orthodox, enemies of Christ. They wage the war. You answer the call on the Libyan shore. You receive your crown with persecution, and your faith inspires our generation. Oh, martyrs of the Libyan shore, defenders of the faith, the stars that shine in the darkness, fountains of hope in the desert. I have listened to the march of the martyrs, the heroes and fighters of the faith, defenders of the faith, the stars that shine in the darkness. Fountains of hope in the desert. I had 
Listen to the march of the martyrs, the heroes and fighters of the faith, defenders of the faith. Zimari Malak Tessaman. May we hear the hymns of the angels. Next, we will be having a short discussion on Abi's Om, led by our brother Fitzum. Fitzum. Am I right? I mean, the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Uh, uh, so uh, probably, uh, hopefully everybody uh, that is participating today uh, participated in our last month uh, monthly meeting or monthly Kuwait as well. Uh, so uh, last month, if we all remember, or those of you who don't remember, we talked about the importance of Tzom uh, or fasting uh, and Abi Yitzom in, in particular. Uh, so uh, today uh, we're going to discuss a couple of things. One, uh, even though our last uh, meeting was uh, about uh, two weeks before uh, Easter or the resurrection uh, uh, or uh, Tensai, uh, we probably didn't have a lot of time to, to reflect or work on our uh, our fasting as we discussed. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, we can discuss about how uh, what we learned from our last Gubai and how it affected the rest of our fasting. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we're also going to discuss Kaleota uh, Samarlin to our brother Dekun Hino. He taught us about uh, uh, temptation and how we can overcome temptation and what the meaning of temptation is. Uh, so what we plan to do moving forward uh, to overcome temptation and what have we learned from his teaching today. Uh, so uh, these are the discussions we're going to be having. Uh, but the first question uh, is going to be, how, how, what? Uh, my camera is not letting me turn it on. I was trying to turn it on, but uh, let me uh, try it. All right, my apologies. So the first thing we're going to discuss would be, uh, uh, since our last monthly meeting or our last Kuvaye, uh, what have we, uh, how, how did we improve our fasting? Uh, what did we do differently after the last Kuvaye? And just like uh, earlier in our discussion, uh, please raise your hands uh, and Diakon Malak will be giving you a chance to, uh, to talk about what, what changed. So as Fitzum said, if you guys have something to share, please raise your hand so I can see that and unmute you. So while we're waiting on participants, uh, one of the main reasons why we do this is so that we can uh, you, we can get better in our spiritual lives. Uh, so if we do this every month or every week or every day, uh, if we don't apply it in our day-to-day -day lives, then it kind of loses its point. Uh, so uh, what have we changed in our, in our fasting? Uh, or what did we learn from last, last month and how did it change us? Uh, so everybody, uh, whether you are part of last month's a meeting or you weren't, uh, everybody should uh, have something to say about uh, fasting and, and the importance of it and, and how, we, uh, how we changed us. Okay, let me unmute Emmanuel. You can go ahead. Manuel, are you there? Okay. He was still muted. Okay. 
Actually, let me let me call Soliana. She raised her hand. You can go ahead, Soliana. Okay. Um, one thing that changed from last year's psalm is that I got older, and I I think I was I'm more mature now, and I think I kind of. It's almost a little bit easier for me because when like temptation, like I learned last year, I kind of got a little more temptated than I did this year, mostly because this year's um was mostly at home and there wasn't anything that temptated me that much. So that's what I think changed for me. Thank you very much, Soliano, for participating. That's great. Um, yeah, there's a huge difference between last year and this year. Even those of us that uh, uh, the, the age difference did not affect us, but the fact that we're at home, quarantining is also has an impact on our fasting. So thank you for participating. Uh, there's some more hands as well. Okay. Uh, yes, you can go ahead. Um, one thing that I did differently than I did uh, like the year before was that like and after our discussion is that I didn't just fast uh, by like not eating and like just changing my diet I tried fasting by like acting more holy and stuff thank you very much that, that was the whole point of uh, you know the whole discussion we had over, over fasting so not only uh, not eating uh, uh, food that uh, that empowers our flesh but also doing spiritual uh things that uh, uh that benefit our souls so thank you um, I know you can go ahead. Um, i know i love you there Okay, we can come back to him. Uh, Nebi, you can go ahead. Um, overall, I think my seriousness towards its own has increased from last year to this year. I believe last year, I wasn't really taking its own seriously as I should have. But um, what I've learned over this year was that I should be more serious. Um, I should figure out and like learn new things throughout its own. I should change like how I live my life throughout, throughout its own. So I, I believe I've changed in that matter. Thank you, Dr. Never you. Uh, that's great. We should always, always, always try to grow spiritually uh, by the day or by the month, by the year. So thank you. Rahul, you can go ahead. Um, I just wanted to add on to say like this fast season, um, I like I know a lot of us when we fast and we think about fast, we kind of just think about not eating, um, not eating like meat products, dairy products, whatever. But this fast, um, I was able to constantly like keep on reminding myself that it's not just like not eating those foods, but um, instead like bettering yourselves like you can read the Bible, you can, um, I don't know, like just spiritually, more spiritually rather than just like um, physically. So just overall, like it, it was more well, well-rounded for me. Um, and I think it helps that we were like, I guess like stuck in our houses. Um, so it just helps me just like focus on myself and not just like only concerned with um, not eating like these certain foods. No, thank you, Ryan. Uh, that's that's very important. Uh, it's you know one of, one of the things that uh, Deacon Malak and Deacon Rafael talked about in our last uh, monthly meeting as well, making sure that uh, not only fasting with our mouth, mouth but our ears and our uh, what we do in our day to day lives as well. Uh, I see more hands. Mm. Wait, can I go? Hey, you can go ahead. Okay. Um, what I learned about um. Like, um, I was almost different for me uh, than last year because last year I would only think about um, what I wouldn't eat 
but um this year it felt like more spiritual because I just like I knew like um that Abitom was just not about eating uh like like don't eat like any meat products or dairy but then like this year it felt like more like it touched me more because I was uh more like into it great thank you very much uh yeah, I appreciate that everyone is uh, saying that uh, from last year to this year or from last month to this month, uh, <coughs> you know, we all uh, have improved or tried to improve our, our practices during prayers, which is a great thing. Uh, we still have some more hands, so uh, Jacqueline, if you... Okay, you can go ahead. Um, I'm Beza's, I mean, I'm Saga sister, Beza, and I just wanted to add that Spelman was really hard for me this year because I was a first year college student and I was out of state. So I didn't really have like any support from like any friends or anything because nobody was Orthodox at my college. And I actually transitioned back to home during quarantine. So the whole process was kind of hard because I went from like eating food and praying by myself to like, coming home to my family and like getting back into the gist of it. Thank you, Beza. It's actually great to hear that. It's it's a challenge that a lot of college students uh, talk about when it comes to uh, both praying and also fasting. One, it's the lack of you know vegan diet and college campuses is an issue. Another one is, of course, finding people or other people that would uh, do uh, the psalm and the, the the prayer with us, uh, which is a challenge on its own. Uh, so. Uh, not giving into temptation and doing what our friends or peers or roommates are doing in, in, in the college or campus life is, is a, a, a huge test. Or as Diakon put it, it's also an opportunity for us to, uh, to, to not give into temptation and be strong in our faith. Uh, so thank you, Zaka. I mean, uh, Biza. Uh, you can go to the next person. Mickey, yes, you can go ahead. Um, so I feel like last year I was more like focused on the food that I ate and not like the way that I acted and the way I was towards other people, which was just like a big part of Spom that most people don't really focus on. And yeah, I feel like this year I try to act more like Christ during like obvious Spom. So thank you, Mickey. That's that's what we always uh, should strive for is. Uh, Christ was here on earth to, to show us the path and the way and, uh, to, uh, you know, exemplifying him and doing what he did here on earth and what he taught us to do is, uh, you know, what we should do every day. So thank you. Mickey, who's next? Jaden, you can go ahead. So I, so last year I was, thinking of like like doing its own so last year's on its own like about the food and stuff but like this year I was thinking about doing I was doing its own like more mentally instead of physically yeah, while doing while doing it physically thank you very much yeah it's that's just as important if not more important than the food uh, actually, uh, you know, uh, doing uh, good things, spending our time connecting with, connecting with our Lord is just as important, if not more, uh, than, than uh, avoiding certain type of food. Uh, thank you. And what do we got next? Naomi, you can go ahead. Um, and it, we have two Naomi stuff. In its own, um, since, since I'm in my house, I got less tempted to eat. I got less tempted to eat like foods that were out of the home restrictions, and um, also it gave me more time to pray at home because usually it's like a long day at school. Since there's no school now, I got more time to pray. Now, Naomi, let me ask you a quick question. Uh, now, uh, this time, you know, this quarantine has been a curse as well as a blessing, right? especially, you know, those of us that 
had the opportunity to fast and pray, we had more time. Uh, and those, those of us that fast, we had food available in our homes. But what are you going to do now when you get back to school? And you know the fast is not going to stop. We have to the, we have to do the seven fasts of the year, uh, regardless whether we have a quarantine or not. So what do you plan to do differently next year or when you get back to school? Um, when I get back to school, since I have school, I could I I want to fix my schedule. So after coming, like I do um in the. I do Tzom in the day, and then after when I come from school, I can give up myself about like an hour, 30 minutes to to pray. Just take away like 30 minutes of my time for praying. Great. Thank you very much, Naomi. Uh, we can go to the next person. We're kind of running out of time, so uh, Naomi will be the last one. Um, this is Britannia, Naomi's little sister. Okay, Vitania, go ahead. Um, this last year's OM, there was a lot of temptation for me because all my friends, um, they didn't really OM, and a lot of my friends didn't know that I did OM, and so, um, and so it was hard because, um, because I couldn't do a lot of the things that my friends were doing, and and I noticed that last year I took the like church for granted because. When we couldn't go to church this year for um, Fasika and Easter, and just every Sunday, I noticed that it was it was harder to be at home and um, at, at home and do and like pray and do than it was than it was at to be at church because you can't smell the it on and just um, just seeing the case, like the case and the diakon up front it's it's better than seeing it on a TV. And so, um, when I co when I go back, when everything goes back to normal, I'm gonna I'm gonna start being better at church and and um, yeah. And I used to talk sometimes with my friends, but I know that I shouldn't take the church for granted. Great, that's that's a huge lesson. Uh, you know, a lesson that all of us should take uh, is not 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 to take church for granted, whether. Uh, you know, use every opportunity we have to participate in our churches uh, and, and and serve our Lord every opportunity we get. Uh, with that being said, uh, like I said in the beginning, uh, I had a couple of uh, questions, right? One one of the discussions was to talk about uh, the great uh, fast of Lent and how we improved ourselves from uh, last week, or a lot of us talked about uh, since last year. Uh, but also, you now what are we going to do moving forward? Uh, as we all know, today we talked about temptation. We learned a lot about temptation. Uh, now, instead of doing the discussion, uh, what I'm going to ask everyone to do, right, uh, is prepare something to share with us next month. Uh, that uh, something you are tempted by, and you defeat a temptation. Uh, for example, we have prayer every day at seven o'clock, right, uh, seven to seven thirty. Uh, let's say your favorite show was on at seven o'clock and you had to go, which is a worldly uh, or a flesh need, uh, giving up that, you know, not let, giving into that temptation and uh, participating in the prayer would be an example. So throughout the whole month, uh, document temptations that you faced and, and you overcame, and all of us will be able to share that uh, next month when we meet in our monthly meetings or if, you know, if we have uh, an opportunity in our uh, daily prayers. Uh, with that being said also, our, our prayer for tonight uh, is gonna continue. Uh, we have the prayer tonight from 7 to 7.30. Uh, so let's make sure that all of us join in. Thank you everyone for participating uh, in the Scuba A. And again, uh, for the Zamarian that were, uh, that were here with us that uh, did the Muslims for us. And also uh, for Diakon, Ahino, who gave us an amazing sermon. I'm done. I need to make it continue. Thank you to everyone who shared their experiences with Zom. And this concludes our monthly conference. And our father, Malak Abraham Kassis Haile Gabriel, will perform the closing prayer. So let's all stand for prayer.
Así es. Malaka brand may not be available, so uh, Malaka, ባታችን <laughs> የሄርበጽ አጋ ይጣበቀልን ያስተማረው መምህራችን ዲያቆን የኖክ ትልቅ ፊዩቸር ያለው ነው የሄር አምላክ ነው ከፊት ያለውን ይባርክለት መንገዱ ሁሉ ይቀና ያድርግለት በዚህ የተሳተፋችሁ ሁላችሁ በተሰቦች የሄር ጸጋውን ያብዛላችሁ አሜን let's say our father our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us and rescue us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O holy virgin Mary in the peace of the angel Gabriel, peace be unto thee. Thou art virgin in spirit as well as in body. O thou mother of perfect God, peace be unto thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Rejoice, O thou who art full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Ask and pray for us, to thy beloved Son, Jesus Christ, that he may have mercy on all of our souls, and forgive us our sins. Amen. Amen. Jaihir amalaki tabbikan mahi sarahat yat gzabi herifta. Jaihirik adasachu. Amen. Gracias.